My bitch drive a all white right. Right, right. Couldn't hit it if you niggas had iron. Hey, Lanes can't call and you lame. And you, lame. you had it and you lost it. all the shine. All the shine. I can buy a billy, don't talk to me. Talk to For a show, 150, don't talk. You know, over the course of my lifetime, I'm seeing some pretty disappointing teams and pretty disappointing organizations, such as the Oklahoma City Thunder last season. You could also argue the Los Angeles Lakers were one of the worst super teams in NBA history in 2012, but I really chalk that up to injuries, but you know, you can make the argument. You also have disappointing rosters such as the Miami Heat in 2011. Sure, they got to the finals, but the result, let's just be honest here, was very disappointing. But in my personal opinion, as an organization over the last decade, I believe the Los Angeles Clippers have to be the most disappointing and underachieving organization in the history of this decade. YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy, Young Mustard. And today we are here to talk about the disappointment known as the Los Angeles Clippers in the 2010s. But before I go any further with this video, this is a disclaimer. We are really only talking about the era of Chris Paul, DeAndre Jordan, and Blake Griffin. Everything after 2017, where Chris Paul was traded and Blake Griffin was traded, and now with DeAndre Jordan gone, all of that we are not going to talk about in this video because it's really that five to six year stretch where Chris Paul was in Los Angeles and they had Lob City that we are going to talk about. So before we go any further with this video, if you have not dropped a like, drop a like down below, comment your opinions down below if you agree or disagree, subscribe, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell and also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, the links for social media will be down below. Now let's continue with this video because let's start from the top. Chris Paul wants out of New Orleans because let's be honest, the organization really wasn't going in the direction that I think Chris Paul wanted to go in his career after numerous playoff failures, losses to the Lakers and losses in the first round and even some injuries combined in with that. I think it was safe to say that Chris Paul wanted to move on to something bigger and better and he got his wish as he was traded to the Los Angeles Lakers, but then it was rescinded I think less than a day by the NBA, which everybody that's so mad about that to this day look i get it it's messed up what they did to chris paul i don't agree with them rescinding the trade request i get that because chris paul he wanted to go to the lakers he wanted to play with kobe he wanted to be in that market because he wanted to win a championship in the best and most flashiest way possible in la with one of the top five players in the league at the moment in kobe bryant and it would have been a really nice story for chris paul and his career would have been completely different had that trade gone through but let's be honest here, the NBA did own the New Orleans Hornets and they have the right to do what they wanted to do. That's just one of those things that you can't control and it sucks the way it is, but it's not necessarily out of their power to do what they did. So necessarily, let's just let it go at this point. It was not a free agency signing, it was a trade and the NBA has the rights to do it because they own that team. But because they did rescind that trade request, he still had the chance to be traded to another team and they chose to trade him to the Los Angeles Clippers. And from that moment going forward, Lob City was born with Chris Paul as the Lob passer to Blake Griffin, one of the most athletic players that I think the NBA has ever seen. Jumped over a car, even though that was really not that impressive looking back on it. But at the time, it was a big deal to a lot of people. Won the dunk contest. And you also have DeAndre Jordan, who's a very athletic, up and coming big man in the NBA. So they had a pretty bright future. And I think when they acquired JJ Redick later on, that established a really good shooting backcourt. And though JJ Redick isn't much of a defender, even though in my opinion, I think he's gotten much better compared to his Orlando days in the beginning of his career, but defensively, Chris Paul could definitely pick up the slack for where JJ Redick lacks. And also when you consider the fact that Blake Griffin, he had immense potential. I mean, people were looking at Blake Griffin as a potential top 10 player in the NBA. I know that's tough to believe now, even though he is balling really well, especially this season. Shout out to Blake Griffin because he's definitely transformed his game to fit this modern NBA. He's officially a stretch four. No one believes Blake Griffin's a top 10 player, and we don't see that happening anytime soon. But back then, we definitely saw the potential. And the Los Angeles Clippers had immense expectations to win a championship in the near future but after numerous failures here and there which we will get to the Los Angeles Clippers became I don't know if it was cursed I don't know if it was just straight up disappointment and failures but they were just garbage I mean it's not like they were garbage in terms of winning games 
but in terms of the expectations that we gave them they completely bombed it every single year but i'm going to get into that in this video because i have three talking points for why the los angeles clippers are the most disappointing organization of this past decade so let's start with point number one now personally when you look at the playoff failures that this team has had look i know a lot of people are going to make excuses especially when it comes to injuries but trust me we will get to that but a lot of these playoff performances were just completely disappointing i'm not going to get into too many specifics because we all kind of know them but let's start off with the 2012 nba season because in the 2012 NBA season, it was a lockout shortened year. They went 40 and 26 and finished fifth in the West. They defeated Memphis in the first round, which was a huge deal because the Los Angeles Clippers were just immune to any type of playoff success. Go watch their celebration when they won in game seven. They acted like they won the NBA Finals for Christ's sake. That was a pretty funny celebration, but it was a good moment for the Los Angeles Clippers. But a lot of people don't talk about this, but they got swept in the second round by the San Antonio Spurs. And yes, I understand the Spurs were a really solid team and ball movement. They were really ahead of the game in terms of that. But let's be honest here. Chris Paul shot a horrible below 37% from the field and 33% from three as well. And nearly five turnovers a game. And Blake Griffin as well averaged 21 and eight, but shot 47% from the field and compare that to his 55% season average, that's not good at all whatsoever. So I definitely think they could have stepped it up in that playoff series. But let's cut them some slack. That was their first time making the playoffs with that core. But in the next season, that does not excuse their failures as well. Because in the next season, they went 56 and 26, four games below of 60 wins, and they finished fourth in the West was defeated in the first round by the Memphis Grizzlies after being up 2-0 in the series. And in my opinion, a lot of that blame goes to Blake Griffin. As in that series, he averaged a mere 13 points and 5 rebounds on 45% shooting from the field. If you look at Chris Paul's numbers, he was fine. DeAndre Jordan, I don't know his numbers off the top of the head, but let's be real, offensively, he's not really expected to give you that much. And at that point in time, DeAndre Jordan really hadn't come into his own in the NBA. So Blake Griffin, a lot of that failure in that series really, in my opinion, falls on him. But let's move on to the next year because in 2014, they would finish with another great record as they went 57 and 25, finished third in the Western Conference, defeated Golden State in the first round when Golden State was on their come up. That was the year before in 2015 when they won over 60 games and Steph Curry won his first MVP. Yeah. The good old days of the Clippers when they actually beat the Golden State Warriors. That's like a joke now looking back on it, but you know, that's a topic for another discussion. But in the second round in the 2014 playoffs, they would lose against the Oklahoma City Thunder in the second round in a winnable series because people forget that in game five, though a lot of people like to focus on the Reggie Jackson bad call that they had in the series, People forget that in game five, they were up 104 to 102 with less than 15 seconds to go in the game. But Chris Paul would have a bad turnover and sure it was a questionable foul that they called on him. But at the end of the day, the ball was in his hands and he badly made a mistake at the wrong time. And who can you blame for that? You can't blame the Thunder. You can't blame the refs. You got to blame Chris Paul. I mean, that was a bad play. And for Chris Paul's standards, I think we all expect more. And that completely changed the tide of the entire series, which they would lose in six games. But let's fast forward also to 2015, because in 2015, same story. They would finish with a really stellar regular season record of 56 and 26 finishing second in the Western Conference, and a lot of people viewed them as the number one contenders to the Golden State Warriors, and they defeated the San Antonio Spurs in the first round in seven games, and a lot of people looked at this team and said, dang, they could actually do it this year, and that picture of Chris Paul and Tim Duncan hugging at the end of game six when Chris Paul hit that miraculous shot that won them the series, let's be honest, a lot of people viewed it as a passing of the torch from Tim Duncan to Chris Paul, and for the first time, people actually believed that the Los Angeles Clippers could actually win the NBA championship. But let's look at what happened in the second round, because infamously in the second round, this was a 3-1 lead blown before the actual 3-1 lead blown meme that everyone made about the Golden State Warriors, because the Clippers 
they were the meme before that ever happened because they blew a 3-1 lead to the Houston Rockets and honestly we all know how it goes I'm not going to get into the specifics but let's be honest here they had the chance to close that series out on numerous occasions I mean without Chris Paul they still managed to steal game one so it's clear that that series should have been won by the Los Angeles Clippers but clearly Josh Smith decided to go James Harden on us and him and Dwight Howard along with all the other bench and role players outside of James Harden but that's a topic for another discussion as well they decided to come and step up and beat the Los Angeles Clippers and quite frankly that was one of the most disappointing performances that I have ever seen in any playoff series and from that moment going forward people's opinion on the Los Angeles Clippers it really wasn't that positive because we viewed them as a team that could actually beat the Golden State Warriors or at least contend with them in the years to come if not beat them in that year and that was their shot and not only did they blew it but they blew it in the worst way possible blowing a 3-1 series lead against a team that their best player was awful for a majority of that series it was very disappointing to see what the Los Angeles Clippers were in that postseason and I'm not going to get into the next two seasons because that's going to contribute to the talking point that I'm going to discuss next but quite frankly the disappointments that I saw from the Los Angeles Clippers in the playoffs year by year by year they have no one else to blame but themselves because they were in numerous situations to win crucial critical games and they were a lot of times favorable in those situations but they just choked whether it was Chris Paul whether it was Blake Griffin or even whether it was the lack of coaching adjustments made by Doc Rivers or Vinny Del Negro or whatever coach was in place it was a very disappointing time for the Los Angeles Clippers in the playoffs in the 2010s now injuries are something that you cannot control. I'm not here to say that the Los Angeles Clippers, we should bash them for getting injured. That's not my point at all when I point out the injuries. I'm just simply saying that injuries and how freakishly accidental these injuries even occur. But let's start off with the 2014 season because in the 2014 season, that's when it all started. Chris Paul would miss 18 games due to a shoulder injury. Fast forward to the 2015 season, Blake Griffin would miss 15 games due to a staph infection in his right elbow. In the 2016 season, that's when the major injuries would occur as Blake Griffin would miss 45 games due to a hand injury after punching one of the team's equipment staff, which is very random and Blake Griffin, come on now. You should have known better, but at the end of the day, a hand injury just by punching somebody's face? If that isn't bad luck, I don't know what is. But fast forward to the postseason of that year, not only would Blake Griffin suffer a postseason ending injury, but Chris Paul himself as well would suffer another postseason ending injury. Chris Paul suffered a fractured hand, and Blake Griffin would suffer a left quad injury. In the 2017 season, Chris Paul would miss 17 games due to a soreness in his left hamstring, come back, and then miss another 14 games due to a ligament tear in his left thumb. Bad luck strikes again for Chris Paul. And in that same season, Blake Griffin would miss 16 games after a minor right knee surgery and when he returned, played the rest of the season, but in the playoffs would have another injury to his big toe that would cause him to miss the remainder of the postseason. And by the way, shout out to Chris Paul because in that series against the Jazz, he balled out, excluding game seven, of course. And shout out to Iso Joe because he did his thing also in that series working them players. But shout out to both those players. But Blake Griffin would miss time off in the postseason. And Chris Paul and Blake Griffin, honestly, it's not really their fault. I'm not blaming them. I'm not blaming their conditioning or their nutrition, anything like that. But injuries just really defined their career in Los Angeles and honestly no one can really tell me that it wasn't a case of bad luck. I mean how do back to back postseasons end in injuries one of them to two of your best players and then the next one happens to your second best player on a layup attempt. That is just straight up pure bad luck and when you consider that they lost that series in seven games yeah Blake Griffin probably would have won them that series. Now the last but certainly not the least most important factor in the Los Angeles Clippers disappointment over the past decade has to be the bad management. Now sure the management has definitely gotten better but that's because Jerry West is really just saying look doc I'm not going to sit back and just watch you fuck up this whole entire organization that ain't happening on my watch. But Doc Rivers before Jerry West got there 
was making some very questionable decisions with this roster. Let's start off with the bad contracts. For example, Austin Rivers, his son, who was a very disappointing player in the NBA at that point in time, especially with the New Orleans Hornets, and then his season with the Los Angeles Clippers when they traded for him, to throw him a three-year $35 million contract was a very puzzling decision and it had a lot of people scratching their heads and questioning if he did that because he felt like it was the right basketball decision or if he did that out of favoritism towards his son. But I guess we'll just never know. The next thing that they did in the bad management is that they were just unable to find another piece to add to the roster even though in my opinion a Carmelo Anthony trade made so much sense at the time, especially when you consider how stale the team had gotten at that small forward position. But instead of trading for Carmelo Anthony or looking for any competent small forwards to fix their biggest weakness at that small forward position, all the acquisitions they made bombed, such as Karan Butler, such as Matt Barnes, such as Lance Stevenson, which was just God right awful, and even Paul Pierce at his old age, that failed too. They failed to put another option for Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, and DeAndre Jordan. And honestly, even if that required for them to trade Blake Griffin or DeAndre Jordan or any other core pieces, or even his son, because apparently according to Chris Paul, Austin Rivers was involved in a trade and it didn't even involve Blake Griffin and they could have gotten Carmelo Anthony, but Doc Rivers didn't want to make the trade. Now, how valid that claim is, we don't know. How valid that rumor is, we still don't know. But I do think that rumor has a lot of credibility, especially when you consider the decisions he made regarding his son with that contract earlier on in his career as the GM. So I definitely think that when it comes to the management, they did this team and these players absolutely no favors. And honestly, you could argue that was the biggest reason why the Los Angeles Clippers, other than playoff success and their own failures individually as players, don't get me wrong, they have their own accountability, but the management did not help things. And honestly, it just made things quite worse for this organization. But in conclusion, this is an organization that has lacked success throughout its entire existence and this window that it had to capture an NBA championship, who knows when they'll ever be presented with this window again. And when you consider the playoff failures, when you consider the injuries that a lot of the players have suffered, primarily their two star players in Blake Griffin and Chris Paul, and when you consider the bad management of Doc Rivers, not focusing and not harping on their main weakness at the small four position and basically ignoring it and bringing back or should I say attempting to bring back the same team year after year after year and expecting different results you know what they say that's the definition of insanity trying the same thing over and over and expecting a different result and the Los Angeles Clippers they kept getting the same results eliminations in the first or the second round so you guys in the comment section y'all let me know what y'all think ruined the los angeles clippers and if you agree or disagree that they're the most disappointing and underachieving team over the past decade in the nba so y'all in the comment section like i said let me know your opinions drop a like down below let's get those likes all the way up also subscribe if you're new to the channel hit the bell next to my name to be notified after each and every video that i post Follow me on social media. Those links are down below. Y'all have a great day. This is your boy, Young Mustard, signing out. Peace.